This is Twit. Virus Total. Last week, they published a report titled Deception at Scale, where they laid out the terrain of the malware samples that are uploaded to them more or less constantly to be analyzed. Uh, you know, they sit in the perfect place to see what's going on. They've got great, you know, scope. I've explained in the past that signing my own executables, I discovered the hard way because people were saying, hey, Windows is saying this is not safe. You know, you, you got a virus. It's like, no, I don't. Uh, Actually, it didn't say that. It just said this is, you know, they don't have any reputation here. So the point is that signing my executables was not sufficient proof of the integrity of my apps to bypass various of what are now hair triggered malware cautions. But Virus Total reported, among other things, get this, that fully 87% of the more than 1 million malicious samples which were signed at the time they were uploaded to virus total since the start of last year January 2021 contained a valid signature 87% had a valid signature those that were signed so what that tells us is that signing code no longer means much it's necessary but not sufficient the bad guys are arranging to obtain code signing credentials, just like any other legitimate, you know, code publisher would, you know, just like I do. So moving forward, the only thing that can be used, that is, can be relied upon, is the reputation of the hash of a given executable uh, th that is earned over time. Any new hash will need to start over from scratch, earning the reputation um, that that specific exact code that that it's the hash of is trustworthy. Um, and there was another little interesting tidbit. If you care to protect yourself eh, somewhat by inspecting the certificate authority who issued the Authenticode certificate that was used to sign a program which you're considering running, it's worth noting that more than half, more actually more than 58% of the most often abused code signing certificates were all issued by just one company, a certificate authority known as Sectigo. And if the name Sectigo isn't ringing any bells, it's probably because they renamed themselves after their repeated conduct spoiled and soiled their previous name, which was Komodo. <laughs> it's, you know, we've talked about Komodo quite a bit in the past, the, all the different mistakes they made, like allowing people to, you know, create their own certificates through problems in their web interface and 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 giving code uh, um, uh, cer certificate minting authentication to people who didn't warrant it and so forth. Anyway, um, I imagine that uh, they're the favorite of malware authors mostly because their certs are less expensive than the competition. And, you know, you know, really, it's not their fault that Virus Total sees most malware signed by their certs since anyone can purchase a code signing certificate from any certificate authority. So you're going to go with the cheapest. Um, I don't, but I don't want to be signed by Komodo, now named Sectigo. Uh, you know, and it's, the whole thing is roughly analogous to what Let's Encrypt did to TLS connections, right? Once upon a time, having a web server certificate meant something. Not anymore. Today, everyone needs to have one, and they mean nothing because they're just being uh, minted by automation based on the domain of the server that they're sitting behind. So, okay. Anyway, Virus Total also revealed that the top three most often spoofed programs 
were Skype, Adobe Reader, and VLC Player. Malware is masquerading as as those three utilities, one of those three, Skype, Adobe Reader, and VLC, as the top three, as basically, obviously, as a means to abuse the well-earned trust that they've earned, that those apps have earned with users everywhere. And while those are the top three, the top ten are rounded out by 7-Zip, TeamViewer, CCleaner, Edge, Steam, Zoom, and WhatsApp. So, yeah, you know, the top of the popular apps that people are needing now uh, to, to grab wherever they are. So, Virus Total said in their report last week, one of the simplest social engineering tricks we've seen involves making malware look like a legitimate program. The icon of these programs is a critical feature used to convince victims that these programs are legitimate. Just the icon. Of course, no one is surprised that threat actors employ a variety of approaches to compromise endpoints by tricking unwitting users into downloading and running seemingly trusted executables. The other way this is achieved is by taking advantage of genuine domains, at least like, you know, the, the top level or, or second level domains, uh, to get around IP-based firewall defenses. Some of the most abused domains which VirusTotal has seen are discordapp.com, squarespace.com, amazonaws.com, mediafire.com, and qq.com. In total, more than 2.5 million suspicious files were downloaded from 101 domains belonging to Alexa's top 1,000 websites. In other words, the top 10 per, 10% of the top 100 website domains have been used as sources for malware. And the misuse of Discord has been well documented with that platform's content delivery network becoming a fertile ground for hosting malware alongside Telegram while also offering a perfect communications hub for attackers. So ultimately, checking anything that's downloaded which might be suspicious against virus total, I think, is the best thing anyone can do. As I mentioned a while ago, back when I was needing to bring old DOS machines onto my network in order to debug SpinWrite on them, I was sometimes needing to go to well-off-the-beaten-path driver repositories to locate old drivers for old network adapters. Driver repositories are classic sources of malware. So in every case, I ran anything that I downloaded past virus total to make sure that it didn't raise any alarms. Um, and normally you get like one or two, some weird, obscure, you know, virus total, I think, scans as across or against as many as 75 different virus, you know, antivirus engines. And you'll typically get a couple reds, uh, you know, you know, misfires, false positives from some scanners you probably have never heard of. And so, you know, that's not a problem. It's when you see like 20 or 30 of them lighting up red that is like, okay, okay do not, you know, do not click this thing uh, so, so that it's able to run. And, you know, stepping back from all this a little bit, it's so annoying that so much of, you know, energy is being spent holding back the forces of darkness. Look at how much how much we put in now to, to doing that. But, you know, on balance, it's worth it because what can be done with computers today is, is truly amazing.